dancing. <laughs> All right, I admit Prince Rupert is, well, he's a bit awkward, dear. That's putting it mildly. But speaking of princes, my pretty daughter, it really is time you thought about getting married. Oh, mother! Now, Rosella, you're nearly 20 years old. Most of your friends are already married. Mother, I'm not ready. There are so many things I haven't done yet. I want to have fun. But Rosella, I happen to know that Prince Throckmorton of Montecor is just mad about you. Prince Throckmorton? Mother, he's so boring. He's not boring, Rosella. He's reliable. And he's so handsome. He has the most beautiful smile, don't you think? And he's so intelligent. How many young men do you know whose hobby is conjugating Latin verbs? And you know you should consider yourself lucky. Every princess in the known world is just dying to marry Prince Throckmorton. You really must strike while the iron is hot, Rosella. That's why I've... Well, I've invited the prince to... Rosella! Alright. Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to King's Quest Seven, The Princeless Bride. I'm Rick, joined as always by Suha and David. I'm here. Hello. Strapped in. It is still... Uh, uh, oh, no! It's Suha Tim! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> it, it's Suha it Tim! Suha Tim. <laughs> Damn! It's not even Suha O'Clock. Wow. Sue o'clock? <laughs> you know what? The disrespect. Fine. Suha it is. Hello, it is me, <laughs> Suha. I'm still here. <laughs> oh, we're very excited for King's Quest 7. I... Anything, anything you'd like to share before we get started, Suha, since I know this one is, like, nearest to your heart? Yeah, well, so... Hmm. I just want you all to know, even though you don't know what I look like, probably, that... The whole time that was playing, I was just back here mouthing every word, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's quietly singing <laughs> along back here. I love that shit. It's so, so terrible. It's so wonderful. Like, you know, Girl in the Tower who Land Beyond <laughs> Dreams is is the King's Quest jam. <laughs> wow. Now there's a hot take. Although I do admit it was really hard for me to not uh, follow along with Rosella when she said, Prince Throckmorton. Mother, but he's he can so conjugate boring. Verbs. I love that. You know what? Like, and I'll, I'll talk more about it when we get into it just so we don't keep people waiting. But I would like to know more about 
Prince Throckmorton of Montecor. <laughs> what a babe. You are the one. You're the one person. <laughs> I cannot be. Please comment and let us know if you too would like to know about um, <laughs> the, the extremely sexy and reliable Latin verb conjugating <laughs> Prince Throckmorton. <laughs> a very handsome, non-boring man. My daughter! Rosella! Where are you? Blast! What is this place? Where is my Rosella? My child! Okay, so uh, I feel like they changed the options a little bit um, with the keep an old bookmark and that kind of thing. No, those are the same options that have always been there. I don't ever remember. Like, I I really thought you had to quit. Yeah, that still sounds the same. Okay. So, things are... Things are going to be different. I was telling David before we started that basically I'm... And I might have even said this last episode, but I'm... My mission is to see if I can find any new content, because I know this game backwards and forwards, especially the first two chapters. I've played them a thousand times, um, and I there's not as many verbs. You know, you have the wand, and that's about it. So I, I really am hoping I can extract some new stuff this time around, but if not, then I will just be appreciating, you know, everything that it is. But, like, even here, see, I can click on the cacti, but I think that's about all I've got. Also, totally relatable content in terms of her. Wow. <laughs> uh, in terms of her dress getting caught, that's me in my sweatpants pockets. Yeah, King, King's Quest Seven really minimized the amount of things that you could do. They 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 broke everything down into a single cursor, and it wasn't just King's Quest Seven. Um, Torrance Passage did this. Wow. Leisure Suit Larry Seven Love for Sale kind of did this, um, but they basically reduced it to you have mm. a cursor. And it flashes whenever hmm. you're hovering over something interesting. It's now you hmm. can, you can still look at inventory items. Yeah. But you can't and, actually like, get a description. You can simply look at them. Yeah, which is a problem for some certain puzzles, in my opinion. Oh, that's right. Of course, I can. <laughs> So I thought this was very silly when I was young, but now that I am a mom, like, I can make myself cry just thinking about my son, and he's fine. Uh, so, like, <laughs> thinking about if my kid was lost and I had their comb, like, genuinely, I could make myself cry just imagining it. So now I'm like, wow, Valenice, I'm so sorry. Like, I had you... I, I did you I did you wrong all these years. Like, of course you cry when you look at Rosella's comb. That's your baby. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I understand now, Queen. Yes, I do. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Woo, woo, woo. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Valenese, prick your finger again. Got yeah, so like there's no option to like to, to look at the stick before you pick it up. She just make a comment on the stick. You just click on it and she takes it. Yeah, it's, so. it's a little... I, I didn't mind, you know, but in the context of this like YouTube channel, it's a little bit sad. Like just not having so that. Yeah. Crystals. How odd. Now at least here she said something. 
Oh man, I can't eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious salt. I think the streamlining of the interface um, makes a lot of sense in terms of like a lot of adventure games were trying and trying to make themselves more accessible. Like LucasArts kind of eventually settled on just having basically three verbs, the the mouth, hand, and eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is this was experimenting with just doing just one for everything. And I know that there's a lot of uh, modern adventure games that kind of use the same style. Like, didn't Techno Babylon have the same thing when we played it? Um, Basically. I'll, I'll, a lot of modern uh, independent adventure games are still using that streamlined interface. And, like, it's fine. It's probably more playable, but I personally miss having all of the options to be able to screw around. And prior to us starting the recording, uh, Suhai had been talking to me about... Um, like this has a major drop off in terms of number of like incidental interactions, Ow. which is you know uh, <laughs> she, she's just going for it. Ouch! Oh, she got a new Last. one. List. I can't reach it. Ow. Maybe this time it'll be different. Maybe I'll die if I do it too many times. Ow. How much blood could she possibly Ouch. have? <laughs> All right. You were saying, David? There's a major drop off in the sheer number of incidental interactions, and from a development standpoint, that makes a lot of sense to try and accomplish. But I think that a lot of us find a lot of charm in terms of like just having a lot of little things to do to interact with. Um, yeah, it it is part of the charm, even though a lot of it is just kind of fluff. Yeah. Incredible. This crown is a little too big to make that fun. It looks like something is supposed to fit in there. I wonder what it will be. <laughs> it's it's so barren feeling now after six, like, and just clicking <laughs> on everything. I mean, there's again, not even a pawn game, shop. Yeah. <laughs> well, although there's something similar. I, it is a pawn shop, basically. This sand is damp. Well, that gourd doesn't look very good to eat. It's all dried out. Well, that... King's Quest Seven happened to be my first King's Quest game because I got it in a bundle with Quest for Glory 4 uh, Space Quest Six and SWAT, um, which uh, it at least overshadowed SWAT. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say three good games. <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't that cute? <laughs> oh my God, her face when she bent down to get it. Yeah, so as you can see, you can still manipulate inventory items in this little 3D interface. And you can find things hidden within boxes and whatnot. Unfortunately necessary, which... It can well, sometimes be easy to forget about. Yeah, and I mean, I guess back in the day it was a little bit easier because it wasn't so speedy, you know? <laughs> oh man, here comes an everyday dialogue line for me. I, I say this all the time. <laughs> Getting awfully tired of this. I love the way she says that. <laughs> I always found this cave a little creepy. Even though I knew nothing was in here, this part looked like danger. I don't know if it was because it was Ooga Booga palette or dark, but I just... Something about this cave freaked me out a little bit. I did not like it. See, you don't need to save all the time. Hmm. I wonder what this could mean. Probably nothing important. We got, um, you know, Punisher, <laughs> s s Snowman, 
So, yeah, so, so first you drink the Punisher Kool-Aid, <laughs> then you build a snowman, uh, then you watch some football, and uh, then your tank is on E, so you go to sleep. Exactly. Another puzzle is solved by me, Valenys. <laughs> this seems fine. Hello? <laughs> I just relate so much more to Valenice now. <laughs> Don't like that. Just. <laughs> 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 Hello. Can that be? I cannot see. I am Valenice of Daventry, good sir. Is there a problem with your eyes? But awful rotten jackalope swiped my glasses. I can't cope. Normally I'd trade with you, but since I'm blind, my day is through. Leave me be. I cannot see. <laughs> what a dick. Of yes. all the rude, inconsiderate. Come on, Valenice, give us another. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> Rare curiosities. Ricardo Eduardo Rodriguez, Rue Rat Proprietor. What? I did not know that was his name. Rare curiosities. Ricardo Eduardo Rodriguez, Rue Rat Proprietor. Wow. Uh, so in huh, the... I didn't know that either. The More official like, guidebook or whatever, where they had it like novelized, I remember that he has very long like, who can it be? I cannot see. I something, something. I do decree. And I can't remember what the like third line is, but it was like this whole long speech. And I always remember that, but... He only says two things. Ricardo Eduardo Rodriguez Rurat. Who can that be? I cannot see. I'm not sure if I should consider it a win Leave for a presentation or if it's like more of that old sort of racism. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll find uh, some more Addies in here. You never know. Ooh. Huh. <laughs> oh, I got something for you, you little shit. Just wait. So how, Suha, how does Ricardo Eduardo Rodriguez Ruret compare to the pawn shop owner from King's Quest VI? Well, unfortunately, the, the pawn shop owner who does not have a name, well, that's kind of bad. Uh, but, you know, he's an icon and I'm not sure anyone can touch him. You know, the <laughs> Ricardo Eduardo is an icon in his own right, but... You know, he doesn't say uh, good day. So according to the King's Quest Omnipedia, his name is Hakim. Really? Aww. Mm -hmm. I wonder where they found that. Maybe the guidebook? I'm, are you sure you didn't, like, misread and it's not Ali? <laughs> <laughs> it's Hakim Adi. It's, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's got Adi somewhere in their name on that island. Sure, why not? Ah, his name is cool. established in the King's Quest Companion. Ah, uh, there you go. Oh, this shit scared me so bad as a kid. Stay away! That works. No, stop! I've got to find a way to get rid of that horrible thing, or at least distract it for a while. Oh, sorry. Wait, I already did that. <laughs> oh. I've got. I'm just gonna see what so happens. So, near as I, I can that. tell, 
Near Good. as I can tell, the try again style of death message started around the time of Leisure Suit Larry 6, and I think that it was an improvement. Mm. It's definitely much more user friendly. But also, it, may, it diminishes the stakes a little bit. Yeah. Oh, God damn it! I was trying to give it corn. Unless you think she does that by herself. I've... I think they're going to make it where any incorrect uh, input is going to get you killed. Or not. <sighs> huh! Well, that was too close for me. Oh, interesting. They're kind of like, uh, you got, you're on the right track. Stay yeah. Away. No, stop. So you can, uh, sort of, you can sort of do it. It's a nice little hint How at the solution. Well, one creature? of the solutions, at least. Yeah. The thing is, I feel like nobody gives Sierra credit for, like, you know, you were just playing Thimbleweed Park, and I'm not going to bag on it here, but I'm just saying that, like, you know, Thimbleweed Park really made sure to mention, like, oh, you know, you, you if this was another adventure game, you'd die. Or, like, you know, they talk about um, dead ends and stuff like that, and it's like, this game does not have dead ends or deaths that do anything like they just let you reload and i feel like nobody gives them credit for like moving away from that uh system that's why i say like i think the try again style of death message is good because it's the best of both worlds you get yeah. the fun deaths from a sierra game without the punishment of having to restore a save game that you may not have made yeah of course if you're a regular follower of our channel you're always saving your game so that yeah. shouldn't be an issue for you the <laughs> wonderful beautiful handsome oh, shit, viewer oh, shit, of saving me. often sir? It's it actually bothers me that it, it's harder to save in this game. Like it, it's sort of disruptive and not necessary. What do you want of me? I, I am Valenice of Daventry, good sir. I wonder if you might tell me where I am. You are far away from life and love. And hope. You are surrounded by dust. And it is dust you shall become. You oh, are so, so pale, <laughs> traveler. Are you... I lost my life in this cursed desert. Now I must wander. Tormented by everlasting, burning thirst. Is there anything I can do? Leave this place if you can. The portal through the mountains, the mouth of the great stone head was closed by an evil enchantress. Legend says that it can be opened, but I know not how. Go now. Sir. Go. This thirst drives me mad, and I know not what it will make me do. Or are you gonna, like, drink my blood? <laughs> mm. I, I appreciate Valnice's, like, uh, audacity to say, Hey, cro walk across three sand dunes, and then recoil in horror as soon as she's with I know. <laughs> I <sh> Sir! <laughs> What do you want? <laughs> Look at him just standing there like the standing emoji. I love this. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Please, help me, sir. You see, I've lost my daughter and... I cannot help you, lady. I could not even help myself. This comb belongs to my daughter. She's a lovely girl with long blonde hair. Have you seen her? I have not, madam. I have seen no living persons except yourself. Oh, 
<laughs> I'm gonna give him some salt water. <laughs> Please, help me, sir. You see, I've lost my daughter and- Pike. Maybe he'll kill me, like, just out of rage. <laughs> Colin Farwalker would never. Alan? I thought it was Colin. <laughs> sir! That's what I said, Colin. Oh, I'm sorry, I heard Alan. What? <laughs> yes, the famous King's Quest ghost, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> He is an icon, just because, like, yeah. I don't know. As a kid, he's very, very spooky, very distinctive. And, like, um, you don't necessarily want to interact with him, but also he's very intriguing. You know, oddly, I was never creeped out by him as a kid. And I was scared of everything. Like, even when he says things like, what do you want? And, like, go. Like, I just never believed the threat of, like, this thirst makes me mad. I know not what I may do. Like, shut up. Nobody's scared of you. It's fine. Oh, man. So, uh, speaking on our... Uh, then, what the fuck? Speaking on, on our conversation about dying, um, I just pulled out my copy of the Authorized Player's Guide uh, uh, of King's Quest Seven, the the one that you have, Suha. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, I'm, I'm reading the beginning, and in the rules for playing King's Quest Seven, the very first bullet point here is, death is your friend. There are dozens of situations in which Rosella and Valenys can die in King's Quest Seven. However, the player is always offered the chance to try again, which allows one to continue playing from the point just before the commission of the fatal act. Don't worry when attempting death-defying feats. If your character dies, there is always a second and third and fourth chance at life. Digital death is so temporary here that you can use it to have more fun by watching the death scenes you might miss by playing smart and well. Die often, die well. I love that. It was. It is just part of the appeal of the Sierra games that we're like focusing on the interaction. Um, it makes the world feel a little bit more dynamic if uh, you can do something stupid and die. I guys, I think it's time for the saving off and goth phase. I think we changed the name <laughs> of the channel to Dying Often, and my new sign off will be uh, Die Often and Die Well, and please take care of yourselves. <laughs> please don't take care Any of yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you want? All right, I got you, bro. I got you. Here, this is for you. <laughs> you have brought me water. Oh my god. My debt to you is eternal, lady. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> bah! You bring me salt water? What manner of heartless joke is this? I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know the water was bad. Leave me, woman. Do not give me false hope. <laughs> I've never done that. The way his face turned in on itself like a fucking like lemon. I just, oh my god. I honestly <laughs> feel so bad about doing this. <laughs> I don't think I can reload. Well, you can't restore save games unless you go back to an old bookmark. So we're just going to have to live with it. <laughs> but you're thinking about it, aren't you? <laughs> I feel so bad, you guys. That was so mean. Oh, my God. <laughs> I He just... I thought he was going to kill us, to be honest with you. <laughs> mm. Cole is not a bad guy. He's just dead. I'll make it hey, up change to the him. movie size to full. Oh. That way, future videos will be in full size. Delightful. Wonderful. <laughs> Do not give me false hope. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Colin. You didn't deserve that. He drank so it all, That's another problem. That's another problem with this game. There's no points. Yeah. So I guess that means by default we get all the points. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Hmm.
Are you trying to uh, get somewhere before you're supposed to? I don't know, because I thought I remembered that you... Maybe I'm thinking of King's Quest V. At this point, I'll just die, probably. Can you even die in the desert here? Oh, you absolutely can. She just, like, collapses. It's hilarious. So, um, when I first, like, encountered, like, King's Quest in the wild, um, I was kind of intimidated by it because, you know, it's like the seventh game in the series. Um, and I had this perception that it had an imp impenetrable amount of lore to it. Like it was a uh, might and magic or an Ultima or whatever. Um, but uh, King's Quest is pretty, pretty accessible, even if it does have like, you know, uh, some minor con uh, continuity. Yeah. yeah, the stories are all pretty self-contained. The most you get, like, from, you know, having played them all is, like, getting to see bits and pieces set up between games, especially, like, um, from uh, 4 through 7. Yeah, I think a big part of it is the fact that none of the protagonists can interact with the other series' protagonists throughout the games. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I can't think of any situation where any of the members of the royal family, like, can... I don't know, you can speak with one another or talk to one another. Like you never need to know anything about what has happened before in order to progress further. So mm -hmm. I think the most you get is like in at the end of three, when like Rosella follows you around for a couple screens and that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But even then, as we've established, Gwydion just thinks that she's some fucking hot lady with giant cans. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can die of thirst when Colin is out there. Like I should have died a while ago. And I didn't know that you could encounter him up here by the cliffs, either. Sir! Quit following me, lady. <laughs> Get your own desert. <laughs> there was also a brief window where I thought that uh, this game was called, like, Queen's Quest 7, just because it had girls on it, and I was Aww. a dumb kid. That is really cute. <laughs> Alright, I should die here. We're getting really far out now. This is my penance, Colin. I've never had to work so hard to die out here. <laughs> it's almost to the point where I'm starting to wonder if they took it out, but there's no way. So I know they took out a couple of deaths. I'm gonna have to start walking back. Like, I've gone so far out. Like, you'd think at this point I would reach the endless, you know, desert. And I should die, but. Alright, that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <God damn. laughs> God damn it. I finally <laughs> you, died. You were right. But you were right. She just falls over. <laughs> I just. We couldn't see it. Well, start walking south. The question is, does Colin impact this or not? Is it just a very, very long timer? I mean, I think it's much more forgiving than past uh, King's Quests. Well, Colin was there on the screen when you died, wasn't he? Oh my god, were you giving me a hint, Rick? No. No, I didn't think you could see this yet. Please, as if I could give you a hint in <laughs> King's Quest Seven. Oh dear, the horn is clogged with sand. <sighs> oh. Oh. Being long-winded comes in handy sometimes. Can you blow it again? Yeah, I will. I just want to see if I can get blown away. Oh shit. Oh.
not impressed. I think the, you know, LucasArts old uh, devs just always riffing on the deaths and dead ends in Seer oh, games. It's just my. like, that was kind of the company line back in the day. That was something they could kind of like oh, snipe them at. Uh, but I think ultimately it's just a different philosophy. Like, I think there is something um, very appealing about like taking Sierra games um, at their own pace, like meeting them at where they're at and like accepting them as a challenge where you're trying to get all the points, but uh, they get lambasted a lot by modern players and critics because like they're much more hostile than contemporary stuff. Mm -hmm. It just annoys me that Sierra did become much more forgiving and people only remember them as like you know, very rigid and like sort of refusing to get with the times or to be a little bit kinder to their players. And the thing is, like, certain other adventure game titles being so proud of their lack of deaths or, you know, dead ends, I still spent hours and hours and hours going in circles, frustrated by obtuse puzzle design. So, you know, there's, they're all great in their own ways. Um, but I just really do not like, you know, too much patting yourself on the back for being better than the other yeah. guys. It's, I find it very off-putting. And, you know, I understand, like, I, I've always argued that these games were very much coming out at a time when video games were still really, really new. If you think about it even now in, like, going into the year 2023, it's still a medium that has only been around for, like, two generations at this point. It's not mm. nearly as long as, you know, like, books or even films. So, like, there's still a learning curve while these games are being made of what works and what doesn't work. And while I understand the argument that, like, other games were doing it different at the time, and that's, you know, some people will, will argue and say that's not an excuse, I still think that it's just they were learning they were still figuring out what makes a good game and i always use my parents as an example because they were humongous sierra fans as i've said before and they loved these games and they would never look at it and say oh this is bad game design because you can die and you have to save your game and there are yeah. dead ends like no they looked at it as well that's part of the challenge of the game you've just got to be smart enough to be able to handle it and yeah. i feel like that was that was the prevailing mentality that just gets lost in translation these days when we have, you know, all these different resources. We have hundreds, thousands of video games out there, adventure games. You know, there's there's information, there's knowledge to be had that just wasn't there back then. So uh, give the games a fucking pass. Like, they were doing their best. Yeah, I mean, I would certainly not go back to the days of Dead Ends. But I just don't resent them the way I feel like a lot of people do. And I don't know if it's just nostalgia that does it, but I find it sort of funny at this age. <laughs> Maybe if it had happened to me now, yeah. I'd be like, what? You know, but I, I, I keep a million save files, so. <laughs> God damn it. nowhere <laughs> fast. <laughs> We're never going to see her die. Oh. What if I did it like this? I think you're still going to die at the side of the screen like you did before. Oh, fuck. God, whatever. <laughs> it's whatever. okay. Through the magic of editing, I will find a way to put this animation in there, front and center, loud and clear, for you and for the viewers. Thank you. Um, I want to read, I want to read this uh, excerpt from an interview with Roberta Williams that I stumbled on because I, I think that it suits a lot of the conversation that we're having right now. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, this was in regards to the fact that people were complaining about King's Quest VII being Disney-fied and maybe more for kids and maybe softer and easier. So the question posed to Roberta Williams was. As you are aware, King's Quest VII received some negative reviews. Do you pay attention to those reviews or do you take them lightly? 
And here's her response. Uh, and I think you're going to love it, Suha. She says, I never take any reviews or opinions of game players lightly. If I did, I would have been gone long ago. I pay very close attention Ooh, to those opinions. My. As far as King's Quest VII receiving negative reviews, I really don't know what you're referring to. Perhaps some people didn't like it as well as others, but overall it has done very well. Some people actually think it was the best. True, it got some negative reviews, but it also received many very positive reviews. Some veteran game players perhaps didn't like it quite as well as many of the older style adventure games, but many of the newer game players loved it. Therefore, if you're me, who do you listen to? How do you interpret the opinions? With King's Quest VII, I've seen everything from horrible reviews to the most glowing reviews I've ever received. I've heard from many who didn't like it at all to those who felt it was the best game they'd ever played. Also, it sold very well and is still selling. Uh, I believe this is in 1999. When it comes to oh, wow. interpreting reviews and or opinions, it's a very delicate business, and even though I do pay attention to these things, I try to remain objective and never let the bad news get me down or the good news get me too self-assured. Once it's all said and done, however, and it comes to the next game, even though I always keep in mind everybody's opinions, it ult ultimately comes down to my opinion and what I find enjoyable. I must enjoy the game I'm working on and to ultimately trust my own judgment. That is great. I mean, I, I respect that. Oh, it's very oh, hard to, especially in that time, change the entire look of your game and to have two female protagonists, you know, like, it was a huge risk. I mean, you guys remember how Wind Waker went over. Uh, so yeah. this, I feel like, would have been, you know, kind of similar, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, of course, they were trying to reach out to, like, more of that family audience. They clearly were trying to make this into, like, a, a Disney cartoon. Yeah, but my but, god, some of the things that happen in this game are not. This game traumatized right. me. Like, I was scared for years. Mm-hmm. Let's check this one more time. Cry. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, skulls in the pool. You've got crying over a basin. Tears of death, apparently. You mean the football? Uh, in the in the football. Uh, then you hold some corn, and uh, oh man, it tastes so good. <laughs> corn really does fix everything. You made it happy. <laughs> Turn it on like a faucet. How amazing is it that Valenice knows herself well enough that she's like, gotta cry. Um, oh shit, go. <laughs> like above the bowl. Like, that's honestly amazing. Mmm, <laughs> fresh. Treat yourself. Uh oh. <laughs> I thought there was <laughs> now you gotta be do one. it again. <laughs> I thought there was gonna be. I did not realize I took the whole thing. I'm sorry. Alexandra hey. uh, swigs back the sacred spring water. This is Suha. Yeah. You know that in the grand tradition of this channel, you have to get fresh water, save your game, and then drink it in front of Colin. <laughs> You're right, I do, I do. Okay, okay. <laughs> I just wish saving was a little bit faster. Oh, there we go. Oh, what a beauty. I love that reaction. How strange. The gourd split in the sun. It looks like there's a loose seed in there. How oh, nice. It took me much longer to get super attached to King's Quest than other Sierra properties just because uh, I much more immediately connected to Space Quest 6 and Quest for Glory 4, but mm -hmm. um, I still have a lot of fond memories of this one. 
Yeah, I have to admit that I'm the same way. It, it, it wasn't until, like, just the last few years that I really realized what King's Quest meant to me. Yeah, my, my dad and brother were always uh, enormous Space Quest fans, so... Uh, and then, mm, as for me myself, flesh. I drifted a lot closer to Quest for Glory. So King's Quest was always kind of like the, uh, you know, the other major Sierra game that, you know, maybe maybe the barometer for Sierra games and, like, what they should be. I don't know. Kind of rambling. <laughs> yes, put the salt crystals in the fresh water. <laughs> I wanted to see if you could, but alas... What do you want? I'll tell you what I want. I want to... God damn it. Hang on, I'm, I'm a little parched. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> did, you, did you see? I drank the water. Come on. Mm, good water. Life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Now, I could drink it at the skeleton and disrespect his skeleton. <laughs> oh, is this your skeleton where you died of thirst? Oh, could never be me. Couldn't be me. I've got all this water. My flesh is still on my bones. Mm. <laughs> Life giving big, nectar. Big unqueenly bilch. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you're thirsty, Scorpion. Worth it. <laughs> Whoops. Did you see she that? Did a little, uh, yeah, she did some drifting. <laughs> it's fine. I'll just make the water a third time. Even though I have done it so many times. I just don't want to fucking reload and go back in there again. It feels faster to just do this. God damn it, or is it faster? I have to go all the way. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, fine. It's not faster. At least I got to disrespect the scorpion by drinking uh, my delicious water in front of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I love the Valenese Daventry disrespect tour. <laughs> How many things can we drink water in front of? I made this water. I created it. I'm like a god. Mm, and it tastes so good. <laughs> I love the serene expression she has as she walks through this like really hot desert. Yeah. Her she, still, she still has dress. her regal strut. Oh, he's mad. He, he, the disrespect must have gotten through that I did it like his skeleton. Is he, I have not been able to avoid him. And now, he, where is he? Wait. Sir! She finally hurries. <laughs> what do you want? God damn it. All right. I was going to blow my horn. I wish to give this to you, traveler. Is it truly sweet water, lady? Could it really be? <laughs> but I thought my thirst would torture me forever. How can I thank you? Can you help me escape this desert? I do not know how to open the portal. But there is something I can do. Follow me. I love his walk. 
It's so bouncy. I love him. He's great. Is... is that... Yes. That is all that remains of Colin Farwalker. The great adventurer. The... Um, his name is Alan oh, Farwalker. I'm <laughs> so sorry. Don't be. Your gift of water has given me peace. We must hurry. I haven't much time left on this earthly plane. I wish to give you something. Did I fuck up? What? You didn't fuck up, but I think if you take the horn, you can't get the other item. Oh. Damn. I mean, I usually like to take this, but I... Huh. I actually thought that I I wanted to show people both ways. Okay, so what we're seeing here, if you hadn't taken the hunting horn, Kylan offers you two different items. Um, well, 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 I should say Kylan offers you a different item here, a, a rope. Um... The hunting horn and the rope are each unique puzzle solutions for a puzzle here in the desert. And this is one thing that King's Quest VII did that was pretty cool. Uh, there's a few different puzzles where there are multiple different solutions depending on, you know, what you think of and what you try. Um, there's two that I can think of off the top of my head in this chapter alone, and this is one of them. So Suha painstakingly went back and replayed the game to get to this point for you, the lovely, handsome, beautiful viewer of Saving Often. So Suha, the question is... Which continuity do you choose? The hunting horn or the rope? I absolutely am a hunting horn gal, but so you guys can see the content, I'm going to take the rope right now. I thank you, good sir. May it help you in your journeys, my lady. Farewell. Now, see, I did not know that the horn disappears. I just, I thought I could still have it. Nope, it's one or the other. You can't have all of the fun, Sua. <laughs> Apparently not. But also, like, why would he take that with him? Like, what, what? Didn't I help him, like, slake his, his eternal thirst? Like, This is where Alexander gets his penchant for wasting inventory items. <laughs> So, this is, in my opinion, a terrible solution. Like, truly terrible. So you don't like this solution? I hate it. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Once I do it. Oh, I think I know why. So now the scorpion's stuck there. That looks like it's attached. I just want this footage. I'm not going to do the puzzle right now. But I just... Oh my god, my yep. heart. Oh my god. <sighs> my heart and ears. I thought I, I thought I was about to get killed. But no, that just happens. <laughs> Look, she runs. It's still better than the Warcraft adventure games. <laughs> oh, it's just going to stay <laughs> here. Yeah. I thought it disappeared after that, but no, it's, it's just going to stay. That's great. That's really great. Wonderful puzzle solution. <laughs> <laughs> like, later, it's just not there. You don't know, like, did it die? Is it ashamed? You know, <laughs> it, it doesn't feel very safe.
Now this, on the other hand, is a fantastic solution. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've got you, you mad little hare! <laughs> Alright, that is enough of that file. Uh, so, I'm going to do the way so that So the continuity like that we want... Yes, because... Is the one with the bug powder. Not only is the solution permanent, it's elegant, it's safe, and you get an extra item that you get to just carry with you and just... Love that. You remember, David, before we started, we were talking about the pawn shop owner and uh, my never-ending quest to give him new items. And uh, we realized that mm. the the um, Mr. Ricardo Eduardo is going to be our new pawn shop owner. <laughs> because I don't know if he has a generic rhyme for things that he won't take. Oh, wait. Before I can do that, I have to do this. <laughs> Here it comes, you little fiend. <laughs> I got you, didn't I? I'm only sorry the game won't let you keep doing it, because he deserves that. <laughs> yes, he does. This is all I have to say. Go away! Go away! Here you are. Oh joy! Oh joy! Oh happy me! I can see! I can see! Thanks to you, I'm not afraid. Now I'm free to deal and trade. The lovely lady shows me gold. How would you like some fine blue mold? No, thank you. I don't want to trade this. You see, it belongs to my daughter. Have you seen her? Hmm, a princess fair? With golden hair? Yes. Have you seen my Rosella? Seen her, lady? Sadly, no. But I hear tales from winds that blow from far away, from the west. My sources are the very best. They tell me that the brave troll king has lost his heart and given a ring to a lovely princess he plans to wed. A foreign princess, it is said. A foreign princess? Well, that could be her. Do you know anything more? To find out more, you'll have to go beyond the woods and far below. Pretty piece of silky cloth. Here, I'll go get my best dead moth. Don't bother, please. <laughs> what a skillful work of clay. I'll trade you a bale of moldy hay. No, thank you. Why is everything moldy? I just want to know. Why, that's a simply smashing stick. How about a fat deer tick? Oh my god. Uh, uh, I'll spare uh, you I my, mean, no, my rhyme, you. but... <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely wrinkled seed. For that, I'll offer this blue bead. That sounds like a good deal. Oh, I forgot that I was actually. What a I needed to do that. Basket. Let me find my silk-lined casket. No, that's all right. 
Hey, that's a great deal. A mighty horn of tarnished brass. Uh, would you take a box of broken glass? Yes. Uh, I think not. Yuck. Okay, but broken uh, glass could be very beast. useful. I don't I'm saying. Want it in the least. It's my lovely turquoise bead. Let me get a thorny weed. I think I'll keep the bead. Oh my goodness. Magic dust. Would you take an old bread crust? <laughs> I don't think so. A juicy, sticky, spiky fruit. Uh, would you like a chewed on boot? Oh no, 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 thank you. Mmm, a tasty grain of salt. Uh, will you take a chocolate malt? Yes. Tempting, but no thank you. I'm trying to watch my figure. No time to chat. The day is fading. Come, Belenice, let's do some trading. You want to offer me a flag? How about a paper bag? Oh no, really, that's fine. That's Rosella. That was a Rosella clip, <laughs> like... <laughs> okay, do you think Rosella would shit down the jackalope's hole? Compared to classy Valenies? Um... <laughs> if it was funny, yes, she would do it. So here is the optimal solution to this puzzle. <laughs> optimal and adorable. Yes. The funny thing is I almost always do the flag. Seriously? Somehow that doesn't surprise me. It's not workable. Like the way that thing was screaming the whole time, like Like this same animation happens. And I really thought it paused because we were about to die. I think it's just because, like, if you do it with the, the stick and the flag, then uh, you can do this immediately. And I'm just impatient to, like, solve this puzzle. I feel like I vaguely remember that it needs to be green, but... looks like it's attached to the altar. Yes. Thank you, Valenies. I don't feel like there were ever any real clues as to what you needed to do. I was just messed with it until it worked. Mm. It's embarrassing to be not moving forward here, but maybe I just didn't look at yet what I need to do. I come back. No, I think there's something that you're missing. As in Valenice is or I am? You are. Because I don't remember this puzzle needing anything else. Am I right in that assessment, David? That was my recollection. Unless we're all simultaneous dum simultaneously dummies. That's possible. I never purport to be anything but. I feel like our friend 
or maybe Max, uh, just clicked through it. I remember it being an issue of him missing a hotspot. Started here. I don't think there's anything new. It's like white in all these. Oh my goodness. Okay. I don't really get why, but whatever. <laughs> Progress. See, her looking around makes way more sense when you do the rope. Oh, David, can you please explain to us why you do the rope? Why I do the rope? That's not what I mean. Like, I I usually just, like, solve the temple puzzle before getting the bug powder, is what I meant. Yeah, but you I can, mean... You can get the stick in the... You can make the flag basically on the first screen, so you can just go in there and uh, do that puzzle, get the, the arrow piece. No, no, I just meant, why do you go for that instead of the bug powder? Like, do you just... Are you impatient? Well, just like... I When I first start to boot up the gang, I'm, I'm just like, oh, I have all the pieces I need to get this item, so I go get it. Mm -hmm. Even though there's a other solution that is much more quiet and peaceable. It looks like... But I don't want to go look at the thing again. Turns around, lined up three of them. Thought I want to turn over. Oh, there we go. I couldn't find the fucking hot spot. Oh man, down into the well. It's times like this that I'm really bothered that you can't save your game traditionally. <laughs> I know. That looks like some kind of offering bowl. Sure does, Valnice. Hmm, that sounds foreboding. <laughs> oh dear. I suppose you can't just take things out of an offering bowl. Look at that. How nice. Now we've got an arrow. Oh, it's a puzzle. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man, I just realized I'm not going to be able to do all the pawn shop stuff because the need to save is like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so difficult. I mean, just doing the things that I've done so far already were such a huge pain. It pains me to leave hmm. behind stuff, but I cannot put us through it every time. <laughs> it's okay. So Listen, any can... content that we don't get to is just content for the viewers to check That's out on right. their own. That's right. 
I could justify it with the way King's Quest 6 was like set up, but I can't do it this way. Oh, what? Then I can for do the road. one thing. That's right. I'm going to I'm going to give him PTSD. Hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Would you like to trade with me? You won't believe what you will see. Oh my, a stunning turquoise shape. Except a shriveled grape. No, I don't think so. He probably would say that for everything. Oh, what a lovely golden. That's ear. how you're going to be able to sleep. Would with you that. like a broken clockwork gear? No, that's all right. I think at this point I'm only missing the uh, the rope, so I won't feel as bad about that. We are about to get to my favorite chapter in the entire game. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome, most beautiful of princesses. <gasps> hmm? <gasps> who who are you, sir? I, uh, I am King Otar Fenris III, ruler of the Volcanics Underground, and you are the Princess Rosella, yes? I am, Your Majesty. How do you know me? Where am I? I saw a beautiful castle before. Where could I find it, please? Castle? Oh, that. It's a dull place. You wouldn't like it. Oh my, I wasn't expecting this. Your Majesty, what weren't you expecting? What's going on? I wasn't expecting you to be so lovely, my lady. You will be the most radiant bride in all the world. Bride? See here, King Otar, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very honored and all, but I can't marry you. I, I don't even know you. Now, <clears throat> if you'll excuse me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a... A troll, dear lady. A troll? Oh! <laughs> a troll. Please don't be sad, princess. You make a lovely troll. A simply stunning troll. I'm a troll? How can I be a troll? I'm not a troll, am I? Come along, princess. Let me escort you to your chamber. Perhaps you'll feel better if you rest. A troll? Troll, huh? A troll? I can't believe I'm a troll! 
And not just any troll. Oh no, I'm engaged to the Troll King. How lucky can a girl get? Settle down, put childish things on.